Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, showing up at Community Group this week. It's just incredible to see relationships continue to be forged in community. And I know the discussion through this series has been great. It sounds to me like people had a great discussion uh, last week, and we're getting emails in all the time talking about it uh, as it carries throughout the week. For those of you who are single out there, uh, thank you so much for looking for ways to apply this. I know it's specific towards marriage, but there's lots of applicable principles to all of us, whether it's in conflict, whether it's in simply having fun, our perception of things, how we're viewed, the way that we can uh, build and uh, nurture the relationships we have. It's uh, really exciting. Hey, as we begin today, I want to talk about a couple of things that we're going to be launching in the spring. So Rock Harbor Marriage Ministry that we've been praying about and what that looks like is going to be taking some big steps uh, come January, February, and even into March. Uh, first off, it's kind of a three-strand approach in order for us to build marriages in a, in a healthy way. The first step is merge. This is premarital. We would love to have couples that are seriously dating, not even yet engaged, or couples that are, are engaged to be part of our merge ministry. This is a chance for us to really build relationships from the very, very beginning. The next step is foundations. These are couples that are married uh, zero to seven years, a chance to forge right into community, to build relationships, and to see how other couples are learning together, um, but really founding our marriage on the things that God talks about in, in his word about what makes for a great marriage. Then we have re-engage. These are for marriages that are wanting to take their marriage from where it's at to a whole nother level and specifically towards those who are struggling in their marriage. We know that uh, we can live um, a certain life publicly, but privately, maybe in our marriage or relationships, we're struggling. And we want this to be a safe place for people to come in and say, hey, we're struggling. We're on the verge of divorce. We need someone we can talk to, and we can see those marriages healed within community. And what we're asking is through our marriage ministry, we would see not just Rock Harbor couples or, or engaged couples or dating couples at Rock Harbor be part of this, but we'd see the entire community. So this is a great way for us to get the, the message of Jesus, the healing and the hope that comes through him into our marriages and into our relationships. So super excited about that. Hey, on to from this day forward. Beginning with week one, we started out talking about seeking God because we believe that a better me makes for a better we. Our desire is that we would sow into our relationship with God, thus changing all the relationships that are around us. Then we jumped right into fighting fair. Last week, Nate talked about having fun. I, I know he talked about belly button to belly button. I can't remember any of the other stuff. I'm sure it was good. I'll have to kind of look at the, I think it was face to side thing or something, but the belly button to belly button was really great. Uh, we've heard lots of incredible comments about that. And we're also excited because we're going to continue talking about uh, sexuality and talking about intimacy in the area of staying pure a week from this week. And so staying pure is how we'll wrap up our series. But this week specifically, we're going to be talking about never giving up. And that's hard because we live in a culture that when things don't go our way, it's easy to say, hey, I'm done with that. Never giving up, look at the heart of Christ, how he was faithful in the mission, faithful in the calling that he had. He wanted to honor his father. He continued even to the point of the cross. So when I look at this, I think about a covenant versus a commitment. See, a commitment today in, in our day and time, it's kind of comes and goes. A covenant's different. A commitment's more like a contract. And we don't want a contract marriage saying, I'll do this if you do this. A covenant says, hey, I am willing to lay down my life for you. I care more about you. Rather than a contract saying, hey, what are my rights that I have in this marriage? A covenant says, hey, I'm willing to fulfill my responsibility and I want to place you higher than me. When we don't like what we're getting in our marriage, we have to look at what we're giving. We have to look at what we're sowing. So our key scripture for this week is Galatians 6. Galatians 6, 7 talks about sowing and reaping. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, he will also reap. For the one who sows in his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary when doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up, we have to stay at it. And we have to remember what we do now actually affects what comes later in our life. 
as I was a student pastor, we would always make up ridiculous games and just have a blast, get friends, uh, students to bring their friends. And some of the games we played were a game called Birdie on a Perch. We also played a game called Booty No Scooty. Um, incredible game. I'll have to explain that to you at some time. Um, we played Sardine Tag, uh, lots of stuff like that. The game I remember really well and that involved the principle of sowing and reaping was called Hide the Watermelon. It was crazy. I dug a hole in a sand volleyball court and I hit a watermelon. And then I put all the students around and I said, hey, there's a watermelon hid out here. They were on four different teams. Whatever team found the watermelon and brought it to a certain point won. Here's the problem with that. When you find the watermelon, you've got to dig the watermelon. You've got to dig it out. Well, that turned into a dog pile, which turned into there was not hardly anything left of the watermelon. I don't know who exactly won the game, but I do know this. It was a game I never forgot because here's what happened. A year later, I look over in our volleyball court and there was a vine that had begun to grow. The first year, there was no melons. There was no watermelon that grew there. But at year two, one watermelon grew. Year three, two grew. Year four, three grew. And it just continued to multiply. It was often, it was that memory of going, man, I looked forward to how many watermelons are we going to get this year? All because of some dumb game. Well, our life is like that too. We sow things in our life and we ultimately reap, reap them a year, years, and decades, generations later. So we have to always be evaluating, what am I pouring into my life? We have to look, look at this in context of relationships. What am I pouring into my relationships? Because what I'm sowing, I'm going to ultimately reap. Same is true in our marriage. What are we sowing into our marriages? So as you have your time with your groups, would you answer this question? Would you share something, a way that you sowed into a relationship or in your life and you reap something not so good? Share a time, a time of confession to say, hey, I did this and this is ultimately what happened. It's something that I regret to this day. Then share some success stories, okay? We don't want it all to be negative, but share some success stories about, hey, here's something we started showing, so in our marriage, in our parenting, or if you're single, in a relationship. Maybe it's something that has taken place at work, it's taken place at school, but you've seen the fruit of that. So take some time to discuss this. Here, here, here's what we know, okay? Everybody wants to be part of a good harvest, but it's also hard to be part of plowing a not so good field. We love like reaping great things, but plowing the field and doing the, the difficult labor and the sweaty days of summer to prepare for those cool fall days where you're bringing in a harvest and you're thinking about what you're going to reap and the, the benefits of that harvest. So be willing to do the hard work on the front end because God ultimately will bless our life for that. Hey, thank you so much for being in community. Thank you for taking the time to be transparent, to give up of your uh, weeknights and, and afternoons and all sorts of things so that you can pour into the lives of other people. Hey, what we sow, we will reap. And so my prayer is in your conversation, you will sow in the good things of God. You'll go through the things of confessing things to one another so that we can reap a harvest, one that we can be proud of. Hey, thank you for being in community. Your life matters to those that are around you. We appreciate all that you're doing. And I love the commitments that we're making from this day forward. That's what it's all about, sowing and reaping. Have a great week.